All right, welcome back. Um, we're gonna. I hope this is quick because it says problem one. We might be proven wrong, but um, we have a we have Effie. All right, we have a whatever this whatever this is. I don't know. This is um, you have a z squared to z function and it satisfies this thing. And what this thing? Well, okay. Like the, the point is that once you write down the values of the function along the axes. It uniquely determines every other value, I think. Let, let me check that. Like, suppose I put 0, 0, 0 here, and then this is 1. Let, let's say I put zeros along all the axes, all right? Um, just, just why not? 0, 0, 0, 0. And I put 1 here. This is 1. And then 0. Or sorry, no. What am I talking about? Hang on. Okay, dun dun plus one. Why is, why is there a plus one? One, two, or something like that. And then this one is... Two. Uh, so I bet I won't need like half the plane. If you, if you can get it... Okay, anyways. Four, three. Oh, I think I, I've seen this picture before. Um, two, three, uh, nine, ten. Nope, never mind. That's not what I thought it was. Nine. Wait, sorry, that's 16. That, that's wrong. Wait, no, we're adding. We're, we're adding. We're. Oh, God. Say three, five, right? Five, five, um, ten, nine, ten, eleven, eight. I think I flipped something. Something's wrong. Uh, six, six. This should be. Wait. Oh god, I'm so bad at this. Okay, so. Okay, let, let me just do this once with variable names so I stop screwing it up. Hey, this is. A, this is X, and this is Y. I mean, not A, 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 P, Q. Um, P plus Q plus 1 minus A, right? So this thing should add up to one more than that side. So with that, uh, 4... Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at this. Is that right? Four, three, five. No, that's still wrong. Oh my god, I can't do anything right today. Holy shit. Okay. One, two, two, three, two, three. No, I, I screwed up this entry too. This should be f oh my god. Everything's wrong. Everything's a disaster. I I I, I, I should just quit math. It's, it's a disaster. Uh, seven, six, six, nine. Okay, this is an example of a thing that works, right? If I just do the multiplication tables, is that true? Oh, it is true. Okay. All right, great. That, that's how you get rid of the one. I was thinking, like, how, how do you get rid of the one? Okay, we're going to let g of x, y equals um, f of x, y. Um, we're going to subtract off x, y, all right? And then x, y plus y, x, y plus y, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So now the new functional equation is called um, g of x, y plus g of x plus 1 y plus 1 is equal to g of x y plus 1 g y or x, x plus 1 y and it seems okay so the set of salute the set of functions that obey obey this identity is a um vector space yeah we're going to use the word vector space because why not um, 
And so... I should be able to just classify things, right? Um, it's a vector space where if I tell you the values of the function on the axes, it uniquely determines the rest of the values. So I want to see what this looks like. So if I require... Yeah, um... Hmm. Yeah, sorry. Let me do this picture quick. We're just gonna... So if I take the one... If I take something that is one at the origin and then zero along all the other things... Okay, so imagine it's one at the origin and it's zero out. Okay, so if I do this, then it's like one minus one, one. Hang on. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, right? In order. Is, so is that true? If I if I make it such that um, it's one on the origin and zero on the axes, do I just get copies? Do I just get a flood of minus ones in the positive region? I think that's what happens. Okay, so. So once I subtract off um, the Shirley, this is like convolution. What do you mean? You want to like, what do you want to do? Like, I think what's happening is that, uh, Well, actually, I don't know. I want it to be linear algebra, but it's infinite dimensional, which is not great. But I think this is basically like a... Bounded implies periodic. Oh, it does? Uh, in what? What is bounded? If, if it's bounded, what happens is that there's only finitely many what triangle which thing is so I don't see it um I mean, so, like, I, I, I'm i looking at this and, like, x times y is kind of, like, the solution that sticks out. Like, the, the solution called x times y. Um, 
I, I think the thing I was going to do is I was going to shift it away and then look at the... I guess, like, it's, it's a little awkward because now it's like you want G to not be close to X times Y. I guess that's what's happening. Um, you're saying that I should just work with the original function F and that if that happens, if it's bounded, why is it periodic? Is that obvious? Pigeonhole? I don't see it. Like just just because it like I get a recurring Like I I th this this works great for like one dimensional stuff. I don't see why it works for two dimensional because you can see that you get like a bunch of copies of like the same square everywhere, but I don't see why that is that for something periodic? I don't know, like for like like for example, like Pascal's triangle mod two is well, there's only finally many patterns, but that sequence is like Pascal's triangle is not periodic. Mod two. Yeah, I know which one you're thinking of, the one with the martingale, where it was like if you had a function for which every like, you know, it kept averaging out, then it was had to be constant to be bounded. This one's a little weirder because it's like, yeah. Like there, there's this X, Y offset. I feel like the, um. I feel like even just working, looking in the first quadrant, like if I, um... So I have this, so I have the shift, right? And then what happens is that if I look at the... Oh, I don't really want to deal with... We'll, we'll just we'll just do the positive things. I'm gonna shift and assume that okay. Um, B1, B2. Like if I know the values of the function on the axes, then I have an explicit formula for each point. Like f of x, g of x, y, is actually given exactly by um, uh, shit. Let me make sure I get this right. Oh crap, the, the sign the sun is mixed in different signs. Um oh, wait, it's a mixed sign song. I can't do it this way. Um Actually, maybe I can kind of do that. Is that Miro thing the only way to have infinite canvas on Linux? I I don't see any reason to believe that. There is a lot of whiteboard software out there. Um, the reason I picked Miro was I was looking for something that... Um, actually, originally I used Miro on my iPad. So I would like draw on the iPad and then it, it would mirror on the screen and that worked for me. And then at some point I got this drawing tablet so now I can draw directly like on it. But... I only tried one. I don't see any reason to believe there aren't others. Also, this is literally a web browser. Like, it, it's it's nothing very fancy. 
Okay, I believe something like this should work. So if I label the axes like so, um, and let's just, okay, I'll, I'll put in a C even though I really don't want to, then by the bounded condition on the axes here, the AIs are bounded. Like AI is at most 2024, um, C is at most, oh my god, my mom's calling me. Um, yeah, we're just gonna label the values on the axes, and then because of this, like the you know, it's it's very bounded on the axes. Then what I imagine doing is I push um, a one and b one. You know, I, I push the recursion, and then the thing that I just did, I think, tells me. Yeah, if I if I take the blue values as like my starting values, then there's a if I if I assign them numbers, and then you know they are what they are, um, then. You know, there's there's a unique way to write a1 plus b1 minus c yada yada, and this is like a1 plus b2 minus c. Actually, this might do what I wanted to do. I think this does what I wanted to do. I think the value at each point is like if I ignore the c offsets because the c the c is a little annoying. Uh, I well actually what we what I know is that it's all minus c, <laughs> but um. It's like the value at a red point will be ai plus bj minus c, right? This is a true statement? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's exactly okay. I was worrying about like infinite clashing things, but actually this is exactly what it is. So in particular, f of xy is given exactly by a sub x plus b sub y minus c plus x times y. But if A's and B's and C are all bounded by 2024, no, I think we're done. I think this is a solution. I want to define G of X equals F of X, Y minus X, Y. I want to assign it the values that I've written here in blue. The bounded condition on the blue axes implies that um, these inequalities are all true. And then when I go back to the form for F in general, that's it. Um, right? Did I mess up? This, this feels a little bit sus. I'm a little bit sus. But, um, But I think I think that's it. Um, yeah, the A's are bounded, the B's are bounded, and then obviously F is not bounded, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So the bases end up being nicer than expected because I was looking at the one, like the C one, freaked me out because it's like you know there were a lot of minus ones everywhere, but the A's and B's actually, if you just drill them into where they are, they're actually very stable. They only they literally just increase the column. All right, we did it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay, 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 well, we'll do the ellipse thing.